she stopped playing once <laughs> once she hadn't been able to take the gnawing hunger anymore. Lyra hadn't eaten since, well, this morning, at home in Camelot. Had that really been today? Des Moines was about as far from home as she got it, she could get, it seemed. <clears throat> she knelt down in front of her, her liar's case and examined what the humans had dropped in there. She was happy to see a few coins, silver and bronze, no gold, but mostly it was just green pieces of paper. She picked one up. It had a human's face on it, and a number one in all the corners. Was this worth something? Lots of humans had given her these, so maybe it was. I've never seen an instrument like that before. Lyra jumped at the voice. She stood up and whirled around, still holding her lyre in both hands. It was a girl, probably about the same age as her. Lyra recognized her. This human had been watching for a while. She had dark hair tied back and hanging down for, from past the collar of her red plaid, sh plaid shirt. Lyra caught her breath. So a human was talking to her again. I know, big deal, it just had to stay calm. Uh, yeah? Lyra said. Wait, you're... You've uh, n never seen one. That couldn't be right. This was a human instrument. It had to be... Didn't humans play these two? It's a lyre, isn't it? The girl asked. Yeah! Lyra gave a quiet sigh of relief. I thought you said you hadn't seen one before. Uh, well... Not in real life, smile, smiling the girl asked. Does it have any magic powers? Lyra was taken aback. Taken aback. Magic? Uh, no, of course not. The girl laughed and shook her head. Calm down, I was only kidding. I mean, it just made me think of... She noticed Lyra's look of confusion. Uh, never mind. You must not play Legend of Zelda. Oh, God. I'm actually not taking requests, Lyra said. She didn't know how to play that one, but it might be the one that the legends that humans were said to reset with liar, liar. Maybe she could learn it. She scooped up the money and green paper papers up and shoved them in her pockets, then put away her instrument. I was just about about to get going. Actually, she paused and turned her head. Wait, you live here, don't you? Where can I go to eat something? The human shrugged. It's not like it's not like there's anything too special around here. I'll eat just about anything at this point. Larry clicked the latches on the case shut and stood up. Her stomach growled. You'll probably just want something cheap anyway. I don't imagine you made very much plan, but you were pretty good, the girl said. Oh, by the way, I'm Audrey. She extended a hand. She was offering a handshake, probably. Lara knew what about those. Ponies had a variation, but without the fingers. My name's Lyra, she said, and took Audrey's hand. Their fingers closed together, and Lyra stared their hands, hardly believing this was happening. Lyra, uh, like your instrument? L uh, God, like your instrument, Audrey said. Audrey said. <laughs> huh? Uh, Lyra said. Yeah, I guess so. She picked a case up off the ground and sh slung her bag over her shoulder. Where do you even learn to play it, one of those? Audrey nodded towards the case as Lyra tucked it back into her bag. I've been playing ever since I was a fifth. I mean... Ever since I was a little kid, Lyra said. My parents got it for me. Well, not really my parents. I was adopted. This conversation wasn't going well. She smiled awkwardly. Oh! Audrey seemed unsure of what to say. I'm just really hungry right now. I need to eat something. Right. I was just on my way to dinner, too. Why don't you come with me? Seriously? The human was offering to eat with her. Uh, that was almost too good to be true. It was still wasn't, and it still wasn't a dream. This was really happening. It was just an offer. You don't have s have to. I mean, it's summer vacation, and I'm a bit starved for hum human interaction. Uh, same here, Lyra blurted out. Well, that settles it, I guess. Lyra nodded vigorously and followed her out of the park. So, do you play here often? I cut through her a lot, and I've never seen you, Audrey said. No, I'm from out of town, Lyra said. Where do you live? Walnut Street. It's a short walk from here. Audrey gestured over to their right, and Lyra's eyes followed her hand. Ugh. She was a bit more interesting in the hand itself than where it was pointing. After a few blocks, she reached a green-roofed building, a restaurant. And through the windows, Lyra could see humans seated at tables, eating something. 
It reminded her again how hungry she was. It's not much, but you said you didn't care, Audrey said as she pulled the handle of the door. She let Larry enter first. Smell of something good. Food, though Larry can identify what, was strong. The inside of the building was set up like an other, any other restaurant, except that there were humans at the tables and the kitchen at the back. There was a family with some children in the corner. Music was playing. From where? It was probably a recording, but there was no phonograph set up that she could see. Normally, Lyra would have been more interested in observing what was going on here, but right now she was starving. Besides, she was about to figure out what humans food, human food was like. It might be similar to what ponies ate. She hoped human humans liked cake as much as she did. <laughs> Audrey went up to the counter and spoke to the human operating register. I'll have a uh, number one, and no mustard on that. Uh, you want that? That is a combo. Yeah. That'll be five sixty-seven. Lyra was watching closely at how Audrey paid, but all she handed to the cashier was a small rectangular card, and then she gave it back to her. Wasn't she supposed to actually pay? Uh, can I help you? Now the cashier was talking to Lyra. What did she order? Uh, all Audrey had said was a number. Uh, Lyra said, uh, I'll just have the same thing. That was a safe way to go, she figured. All right, 567. 567. What? Lyra reached into her pocket and pulled out the wad of paper. She was pretty sure it was human currency. She stared at it for a few seconds and handed it over. Human looked confused, but took out some of some of them and handed the rest back to her. He scooped a few coins out of the register. Thirty-three cents is your change. Have a nice day. Uh, you too, Larry said. Everybody here was so friendly. Princess Celestia had been wrong about humans. Or at least, Larry had been right that the humans in the, her world would be different. It was hard to believe that just this morning she'd been in boring old Camelot, and now she was a... She was somewhere as amazing as Des Moines. So, um, Myra stated, what exactly does Des Moines mean? Uh, that's where we are, right? Uh, I can't remember, Audrey said. Her arms were folded in front of her. It's something French. Oh, really? So she'd ended up in France, Lyra smiled, imagining that rarity, what Rarity's reaction would be if she <laughs> knew she was right now. France was a real place. In this world, it was still thriving. <clears throat> How long have you been in town? Audrey raised an eyebrow. Oh, I just got here today, Lyra said. You'll get used to it. It's pretty boring around here, really. I doubt that, Lyra smiled. As she waited for her food, Lyra listened to the music. Wherever it might be coming from, it was pretty catchy, whatever it was. I don't take money, I don't take fame. Don't need no credit card to ride the tra this train. It was an upbeat tune. This was human music, Lara realized. She looked, liked it more than the classical stuff that was popular back home. It's strong and it's sudden. It's cruel sometimes. But it might just save your life. That's the power of love. My god. The food came out on brown trays. Lara recognized some of the food on, as fries, but they didn't look like they were made from hay like the ones back home. The other food came in small square boxes made of cardboard. They'd been given empty cups made made out of paper. She watched Audrey go over to a box next to the counter and fill up hers with something. Lara just Im imitated what she'd done and took a, took a sip. It was just regular soda, a bit sweeter and more bubbly than back home, but other than that, it was like being at Sugar Cube Corner again. By the time they sat down, Lara couldn't hold herself back. She opened up the box. It was some kind of sandwich started eating immediately. So, you really were hungry, Aud Audrey said, staring at her in a mild amusement. Lyra nodded and swallowed a bite. It's delicious! It's really nothing special, Audrey said. She leaned forward. Anyways, where did you say you were from? It's, um... Lyra took another bite, wondering how much she w should say. What did humans think about ponies? She wasn't going to take chances until she knew. It's a... a small town, really far from here. You've probably never heard of it. It's that far away. Right. Audrey gave a slow nod and started started her own food. Lettuce was falling out of Lyra's sandwich onto the tray. It was difficult to so 
difficult to hold the sandwich all together. Maybe she just wasn't experienced enough with her own hands. Her new hands. Lyra watched as Audrey picked up and ate her ate some fries. She used her fingers thoughtlessly. She'd always had had them, so she didn't realize they were anything special. Humans like her couldn't even imagine how lucky they were. I I'd really like to hear more about you, Lyra said. What do you do? Uh, do you have a job? I tried applying a few places a few places last summer. They didn't get anything back. I didn't get anything back. Uh, same thing this year. Marjorie's hands moved idly as she spoke. Usually I'm too busy with school to work with work the rest of the years. Lyra stopped and stared at her. You're still in school? But how old are you? Sixteen, as of last Friday, February. What do you mean, still? I graduated years ago, Lyra said. From what? Audrey said. I've still got two years of high school left. And then I went... Want to go to Grand View to study psychology, and that'll be another four years at least. Lyra didn't know what to say. Humans really went to school for that long. She was even a few months older than this human, and yet she'd been out of magic school for a lo long time. Her thoughts were interrupted by a sudden burst of music. It was a tiny, had a tiny quality and sounded close by, closer than other music that was playing here. Whoops, uh, that's mine, I just said, pulling some small black object from her pocket. She stared down at it for a moment and got an irritated look on her face. Lyra sat there, not sure what the proper response was. Why would he expect me to know anything about eBay? Audrey w wasn't speaking to her. She just stared at the thing in her hands and then started tapping on it with her thumbs, which was interesting. And then she put it away again, and... Her friendly expression turned instantly. Sorry, that was my friend Nathan. Lyra nodded, though she was even more confused than ever. That thing had a name, and Audrey considered it a uh, friend? Audrey's expl explanation had been so casual that it was as if Lyra was simply expected to understand. Uh, but anyways, I still don't know anything about you. What are you doing here in Des Moines? Audrey asked. Oh, well... I hesitated. It was probably best to tell her tell the truth. I'm looking for my parents, actually. Audrey nodded and took a sip of her drink. Right. You mentioned you were adopted earlier, she said, and then quickly added, You don't mind me asking about it, do you? Uh, not at all, I said. I actually don't even know that I was adopted until I was just recently. Really? Most adopted children these days know about it. It relieves, relieves a lot of the sig stigma. Let's kids know that they're still wanted, Audrey said. I can't imagine what you must have gone through when you found out. <sighs> My situation was complicated. Let's leave it at that, Myra said. Shaking her head, Audrey muttered, Still, leaving your parents behind and all, all that? I moved out a while ago. I guess I could have stayed in town closer to home. Twilight did that, Myra said. Lyra said, shrugging. Twilight? Yeah, she was a friend, Lyra said. She remembered when she they'd been doing research together a few months ago. Look who had turned out to be right. That's kind of an odd name, Audrey said, watch, wrinkling her nose. What, were your parents hippies or something? Lyra suddenly realized what she'd done. Pony names were different from human na ones. It had completely slipped her mind. Uh, yeah, total hippies. Whatever that means, Lyra thought. It seemed to be a satisfactory response, though. People must always be teasing her, you know, about the books? Oh, uh, well, sometimes, but... Lyra blinked. Wait, how do you, did you know Twilight likes books? Uh, no, I was talking about... Audrey gave a sigh. You know what? Never mind. Keep going. You were talking about when you moved out. How long ago was that? About... Lyra thought for a moment. Four years ago. Audrey stared at her. And you're... how old? Sixteen. The same as you. Lyra grinned. You've been living on your own since you were twelve. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I had a roommate, I said. This city's bigger than what I'm used to, but I think I'll be able to manage. Your parents kicked you out when you were twelve. Audrey seemed shocked with some re for some reason. Uh, no. I chose to move, on, move out, Lyra said. They didn't force me to leave or anything, but I wanted to be on my own. 
my parents didn't really like all the research I was doing about uh, Lara's voice trailed off and her eyes wandered around the restaurant at the human be humans behind the counter and the other tables at Audrey sitting right in front of her. Well, it's not really important, but I was able to do whatever I wanted. You were twelve, Audrey repeated. That's just, I don't know, a serious case of neglect or something. Didn't social services find out about it? It's really no big deal, Lyra said. Audrey shook her head, then continued. And you mentioned trying to find your real parents? That's why you came here? Yeah, my parents, well, my adopted parents, they gave me this. She reached down and pick it, picked up her bag by the side of the table and took out the picture of it. This is all I have for my real parents. Audrey took the picture and looked over it for a few moments. This is all they gave you. Do you even know their names? Anything about where they're from? Uh, Lyra knew... All Lyra knew was that they were from this world. Still, she didn't know humans were aware that Equestria existed. She hadn't known that this place had... Uh, what... That this place had... That hadn't known that this place had... Eh. I'm sorry, I'm getting, like, sidetracked. No. I don't really know anything about them. Jeez! I hate to say it, but I don't think this will do much good. She turned it over, but nothing was on the other side. She handed it back. I can't belie believe they just send you out on your own with nothing, to nothing but that. This kind of thing just doesn't happen. It makes no sense! Oh, it's fine. Uh, like I said, I've lived on my own for a long time. Lyra said, slipping it, slipping it back into her bag next to her journal. I think I can manage. Where are you from? Like I said, you wouldn't have heard of it. It's not important. Lyra waved one hand, holding the remaining quarter of her sandwich in the other. I don't even... I don't even know what to say to this. Uh, yeah. Lyra took another bite as she tried to figure out what to say next. She finished the last of her sandwich. It was exactly what she'd needed, and she was feeling completely full. That was delicious. What is... What is it? You seriously never had a Big Mac before? Audrey said. First thing that came to mind was Applejack's big brother. But obviously that wasn't what she was talking about. The sandwich must have just had the same name, by coincidence. So, what's in it? Lyra asked. Audrey shrugged. Greasy meat and cheese on a cheap bun. I don't know exactly what the sauce is, but that's... Lyra had stopped listening after the second word. She slowly raised a hand to her mouth. You said there's meat on meat in that. Of course. Uh, well, kind of. I mean, it's fast food. Who knows what it really... Like... Animals. Huh? That... That came from... Something that was alive. Who did I just eat? Lyra demanded. <laughs> Audrey's eyes went wide with concern. She put her head on one hand and stared at the table. Oh my god, you're a vegetarian, she said. You should have told me. I figured every everyone knew what these are. Uh, don't tell me you've never been to a McDonald's before. Who was that? Lara said, her voice barely above a whisper. <laughs> It was from a cow, probably. Mostly, I mean. I don't know how much of it was filler, Audrey said, stumbling over her words. There were cows on Applejack's farm. They raised them for their milk and treated them kindly. Humans ate them, and Lyra just had just... She was going to be sick. Audrey seemed pan panicked, too, but not even half so much as what Lyra was feeling. Oh my god, if you're a vegetarian, you could have could warned me earlier. I would have suggested someplace that else. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Lara shook her head slowly. Pinky was right, she muttered. And the worst part, meat was delicious. <laughs> oh god. Uh, who? Audrey said. Right about what? Oh, did I say Pinky? I meant uh, Diane. Lara hoped that <laughs> would save her from more questions. Her stomach was doing backflips. We always call her Pinky because it's her favorite color. But she told me about... Lara's voice trailed off and she groaned. 
Lyra, are you really going to be okay? I mean, I really... I feel really terrible about this whole thing. I'll be fine, she mumbled. Do... do all humans eat like this? Well, no. I mean, you just said you were... vegetarian. Audrey shook her head. God, I really am sorry. This... she put the... her head on... her hands and stared down at the table. She finished the rest of her food in uncomfortable silence, avoiding Lyra's eyes. The rest of the food seemed okay. It was safe, at any rate. Lyra picked up the fries. Picked up the fries, though. She wasn't feeling hungry anymore. Lyra finally spoke up again. Audrey, you don't eat ponies, do you? What? No! Oh, okay. That was good. At least, though, it didn't really make things any better. Lyra really wanted to trust this human. Things had been going so well, but this? Could she really overlook this? Then again, all humans, or most of them anyway, did eat like this. It was their natural biology. Maybe they had no choice. <clears throat> but it had tasted good. Audrey had called her uh, vegetarian, so maybe it was normal for some humans not to eat, eat it. But it had sounded like an exception instead of the rule. Well, Lyra just wasn't sure what to think anymore. Finally, Audrey spoke up again. Uh, Lyra, you said you were just passing through town, she said, pointing a finger outwards idly. Yeah, that's right, Lyra said. Where are you staying? I haven't really thought about that, to be honest, Lyra admitted. Today had been too overwhelming. Well, uh, Audrey was looking for the words to say. She took another drink of her soda. You're an interesting person, Lyra. I'll say that much. Lyra smiled a little bit. Thank you. Having a human color interesting was an incredible honor. She thought Audrey was more, much more fascinating. You're also incredible, incredibly naive, and something terrible is going to happen if you happen to you if you you were left on your own. Uh, what do you mean? Lyra asked. The human world had been seemed safe to her. Well, other than the food, it seemed impossible that anything worse than that could happen. Uh, what I'm saying is, Audrey gave a small laugh and looked down at the table. I'm crazy for saying this because I just met you and all, but we've got a guest room back home, and I, if you need a place to stay until you get things fi figured out, I'd love to. Lyra said, her face lightened up, and then she shrank back down. The outburst had been louder than she'd w wanted. I guess that settles. I guess that's settled then. Audrey said, smiling. <coughs> Come on, I'll show you where I live. Audrey's house was just a half-hour walk away. It was two stories, painted white with a gray roof. It looked a lot like the other houses that were all around it, actually. They seemed to be arranged in a bit more orderly than Ponyville, kind of an, a grid pattern. It was thanks to the roads that the humans' humans carriages required. One of them still sitting was sitting in front of the house. <coughs> this part of the town was quieter than the center was had been. All the houses had lawns with grass and trees, some better tended than others. Uh, looks like my mom's home, Maji said, nodding towards the stationary, the stationary wagon. I'll tell her. I'll tell her you're staying over. Don't worry, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, all right, Lyra. Lyra was still amazed that she was about to stay in a human's home. It was almost enough to make her forget what she'd been eaten. She just eaten, almost. Lyra noticed the word, Lauren, on the side of the mailbox in front of the house. She followed Audrey up to, to the door and stepped inside. The inter entry hall really didn't feel too foreign. There was a still life painting hung on the, one of the wall, wall of some fruit. Yeah, one of the walls of some fruit. And across from the stairs, headed up. Across from that stairs, headed up to the right. Lyra noticed that the stairs were narrower than back home, making them far more comp compact. Besides, the extra width wouldn't be necessary for a two-legged human. Not long after they'd entered the house and Audrey had pulled the door shut, another human walked in. She looked like, looked kind of like Audrey, but her hair was curly instead of long. Oh, I thought you'd be home soon. Dad. Oh, I thought you'd be home soon. Dad's still at work. Audrey's mother nodded, then noticed Lyra. And who's this? This is Lyra. I told her she could stay with us for a while. 
Audrey's voice trailed off, and her mother gave her a look. She turned to Lyra. Um, make yourself at home. I'll handle this. Oh, uh, thanks, Lyra said. She headed down the hallway and uh, left the two humans in the entry. Their voices had dropped low. Lyra couldn't make out what they were saying, but she trusted Audrey. Maybe more than she should. No. The meat had been a misunderstanding. She couldn't dwell on that. Even if she couldn't force it out of her mind, no matter how hard she tried. Besides, uh, was she really in an any position to turn down the kindness of strangers, especially humans. She had to get her mind off of what she'd done. This was a human house, after all. The thought of what was still exciting to her, and regardless of everything else, Lyra headed into the other room. Now the house was starting to look different from Ponyville. The living room, if that's what this was, had a strange setup. A couch had a few chairs were and a few chairs were set up, all facing a black box. At the moment, Lyra had no idea what it was for. It looked boring, so she turned her attention to the framed photos on the end table. This one. It looked just like Hearthwarming Eve. They had a tree decorated and, every and everything. No, wait. That would be Christmas, wouldn't it? Lyra was grinning. Maybe she could ask them about what that was. But she couldn't be too ob obvious that she didn't know about it. All humans celebrate Christmas, after all. Another one seemed to be Nightmare Night, a small human, the age of a young one. The age of the young one she'd seen at the restaurant was dressed like a black cat. It was probably Audrey at a younger age. But if humans didn't have Nightmare, Nightmare Moon, then who did they celebrate? She noticed the coffee table in front of the sofa had a vase with some flowers in it. Lara was feeling a bit per peckish. Hopefully she wouldn't be overstepping her bounds as a guest if she took one. Oh, God. She, b <laughs> she bit into the petals and instantly had a resist spitting it out. It was way too bitter. She coughed and tried to swallow it. Lyra headed back into the entry wall. As she got closer, their voices became clearer. She's had a hard, hard life. She won't even tell, tell me what she's been through. I realize that, but this isn't like when you, you used to bring home stray animals. This is a human being, Audrey. A stranger. Do you even know anything about her? Where is she from? She's going through a rough time. She's confused. That voice was Audrey's. Lyra walked in. Uh, sorry, but I think you're... Oh, God! Really? Hold on, I gotta pause this. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry about that, guys. I had to get out a little, like laugh before I finish reading this. Lyra walked in. Um, sorry, but I think your flowers went bad. They don't taste right as at all. She she was holding the stem with the head bit, partially bitten off. Silence. Uh, Audrey wasn't sh quite sure what to say. Sorry, Lyra said quietly. No, it's fine, it's fine. Audrey said. Lyra, was it? Audrey's mother said. Audrey says you're in town wor working to make your own money. Lyra nodded. I really won't be any trouble. I can stay, right? She took another bite of the flower stem without realizing it and grimaced again. How could this taste bad than when earlier today she'd eaten? Audrey exchanged a glance with her mother, then turned back to Lyra. Uh, come on, I'll show you where you'll be staying. Audrey led her over to the stairs. It was starting to get dark outside. Myra was helping Audrey put covers on the guest bed she'd be sleeping in. Could you get that that corner? Audrey held, held one end of the floral pattern sheets and pointed with her free hand. Sure, Lyra helped tuck it under. I can really stay here, right? Uh, how long? Uh, however long you need to. I think you need to come up with a better plan, though. At this point, trying to find those people from your photo is just unrealistic. Uh, they finished with the mattress cover and started with the blanket. It was just a simple task, but they were using their hands for it. One hand had a hold up cover of the mattress while the other pulled the cover over it. Audrey had picked up the blanket when a man walked in the hallway. You must be Lyra, he said. I heard you'd be staying with us. He turned to look at, look at him. He was probably Audrey's father. Uh, yeah. Mom talked to you, she, Audrey s said, about, well, 
I, I really won't be any trouble, Larry cut in. I'm sure you won't be, he said, smiling. And we can't exactly throw you back out straight now, can we? Larry could hardly believe he how lucky she'd been to end up here. I can't tell you how much this means to me. It's nice to meet you, Lyra. Just let us know if we need if you need anything. We really do want to help you. Uh, thank you, Lyra said, smiling. I think I'm doing okay right now, though. She went back to making the bed and finished putting the sheets on. I'll leave you you be for now, then. He turned and left as they finished making the bed. Looks good, Madri said. And like Dad said, just tell us if you need anything. Lyra was staring at the bookshelf at the end of the room. Uh... Do you mind if I read some of those? She pointed at them. Audrey shrugged. Sure, if you want to, I guess. Uh, thanks, Larry on. But actually, I think I'll just go to bed for tonight. She realized again that she'd woken up this morning in Cairn lot. It felt like years ago. She needed some rest. Okay, good night then. And uh, night. There were some. There were strange, unidentifiable sounds outside of the human world. Lara thought they might be those carriages, but there were also a loud, high-pitched whine that grew louder and faded away. Lara was stretched out on the bed with her journal open in front of her, a pencil in her hand. It wasn't too different from home, except now she was writing from experience, and there were so many new things she'd learned about humans today. Where to start? She tapped the eraser against her lip. She took another glance over the ro room she was staying in. It was dark, other than the lamp on the table next to her. In front of that, she'd sit down on her bag, and curtains hu hung in front of the window. But she hadn't felt like closing them. Earlier, she had looked at the titles of everything on the bookshelf and just couldn't decide where to start. Human culture was even wider, more varied than Equestria's. Back to her journal. First off, be careful of what you eat. The note was worth circling. Lyra cringed just thinking of what had happened earlier today. Audrey hadn't meant any harm, though. Eating meat was just a normal human behavior. It didn't change the fact that Lyra never wanted to do it again. Moving on, there was all of those inventions that were in the world. She looked back to the few sketches of carriages that she'd done based on her dreams. Those had been surprisingly accurate. She went back to the, a blank page. The idea that this was her world. This huge, amazing place was just wonderful. Equestria just couldn't compare it to what might be in store for here in France. France. And she'd already made a friend who could help her find her <laughs> way around. Though she did miss Bonbon. Bon. A smile came to her face as she imagined what Bonbon's bon's reaction would be to seeing her now. But that would never happen. How could she get back without any magic? Besides, the spell was too difficult even for a normal unicorn. How had she even gotten to Equestria to begin with? So many questions, and she'd been tho she'd been though too much. There's no R in th why 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 that says though not through. Ah, my apologies again, viewers. <laughs> through too much day to even consider them all. She yawned. She really. It should just, just get to sleep. She turned and saw her necklace hanging on the bedpost. A gold liar. Just like her cutie mark. She reached past the lamp trying to find the switch. She wondered if all humans had things like this in their homes. Magical appliances existed in question, but they weren't too common. But judging from what Audrey had said this morning, she made it sound like magic was some kind of a joke. How did anything here work, then? Her fingers closed around the knob, and it clicked as she twisted twisted to the off position. She was too tired to think about all these questions right now. All things considered, day one as a human had been a success. <laughs>